Think of the panels in Photoshop as mini workspaces. The swatch panel, for example, is where you keep all of your paints. The color panel, in turn, is the palette where you mix paints. Each of these options is accessed through the window menu, and you can organize your work in any way that you choose. Throughout this course, we've talked about panels quite a bit. I've gone over almost every single panel in detail, and we've talked a little bit in the workspace overview about arranging the panels, but how do we make that even more efficient than just bringing up the panels that we are going to use often? Uh, let's take the swatches panel, for example. Not all of the panels are gonna be able to have this ability. Uh, for instance, the character panel, there's not what much we're gonna do. The character panel is the character panel. About the only thing we can do is change the size of the font preview here, and that's not very exciting, nor is gonna make it very much more efficient. So I'll jump up here to the swatches panel, and let's say I'm doing some concept design work. Concept design work, typically when I work, I'm not gonna use all of these colors. So I'm gonna trim this down to the smallest initial palette that I can find, which in this case is going to be photo filter colors. Hit OK. And you see here, we've only got a few colors. Most of these I'm going to delete. I'll spend just a little bit of time setting up the, the exact color palette that I want. And a lot of concept design I basically learned with Prismacolor markers, and I learned in grays. So the first thing I'm going to do is switch over to web colors, and then I'm going to select every other shade of gray here, ending at black. And what I'm going to do is click OK with the first one. Now you'll notice that the 20% gray is our active color, and I'm going to add a swatch. Do that same thing, and we'll go for the 60% gray. Hit OK, add another swatch, and we'll end at black and add another swatch. Basically, those are the three colors that I'm going to use to do the entire painting. So all of these other colors, I can just delete. All right, so now I've deleted every other swatch except for my basic three. So the first thing I'm going to do is select swatch one, right click and rename it. I'm going to name this 20% flat gray. And likewise, I'm going to rename this one 60. But the final one is obviously black. With the 20% gray selected, there are two other th options that I like to have open. The first one is, I like to have a little bit of a warm gray. So I'm gonna check off web only colors and I'm gonna increase the red. Hit okay. Add another swatch. And I'm gonna call this one 20% warm gray. I'm going to do the same thing with the 60, and after that, I'll repeat for the cool colors. Instead of increasing the red, I'll increase the blue. And I don't know if you remember this, but this was 215, so we can just type that in, hit enter, create the swatch, call this one 20% cool gray. Do the same thing for the 60. So these are the basic color swatches that I'm gonna use. And now I can drag this panel all the way up because I'm only ever gonna use those. Styles again, I can get rid of, I can get rid of info. Now, the other thing that I'll always do is, see this little double arrow over here? You hover over that, it says collapse to icons. Click on that, and now you essentially are only taking up the, the amount of space that the toolbar is taking up. Furthermore, if I zoom out here to show you my full screen and then I press F twice, to go into full screen mode. Now, if I go over to the left hand side, as you may recall from a different tutorial, the toolbar opens up if I need to select a different tool. And if I hover over here on the right hand side, then all my panel bars will pop open and I can control the history if I want. I can go back to layers, bring up the color swatches. Any of these options is available and I can paint without any distractions in the meantime. All right, so let's go back to our panels. If you use this philosophy with all of your panels, and I'll bring up the brush presets, same idea here. Any of these brush presets that you're not using, just get rid of them. Yep, delete it. We can reset it later. Delete. And then we can bring this entire panel group over here. 
with the rest of our icon panel. All right, so I hope that helped. Remember, go through and figure out over time what you're going to use and what you're not going to use. Don't just start getting rid of stuff because I've gotten rid of it because there are going to be things in there that you'll find you use very often that help with your work that I'm not going to necessarily use. Again, I'm going to try and cover over all those things so you know what they are. But in the meantime, anything you find you're using often, bring that to the forefront. Anything else you can access with the window menu. Well, that's all for panels. Please remember to comment, rate, and subscribe below and send any questions that you may have to requests at mahalo.com. Thanks for watching.